Hey y'all, my name is Sarah and this is my floss tube, Sarah Stitches. Um, today is Monday, May 24th, and <laughs> look, filming on a different day. I'm filming on a Monday morning. I usually try to get these out on film them on Sundays, but um, for some reason, the one I, I tried to film yesterday, it didn't like, it wouldn't ever load it. I've been having problems, so I thought, well, let me just reshoot it real quick this morning and see see what happens. I'm hoping I can get this shot. My um, uh, husband's not here, he's fishing. And I never know during the week when my mother's nurse is gonna be here. She's She just calls and says, you know, I'm, I'm so many minutes away from your house and I understand why they do it. They have to see, you know, a lot of times what's really going on. And so um, I'm praying that I don't get a phone call while I'm trying to video saying, you know, I'm coming. She's never been here this early. Most of the time she shows up at my house either mid morning or afternoon. So I hope that, um, I hope I can get this filmed. Um, I hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, we did here. It's um, well and a, a great last week. Um, um, we, um, it was kind of a, we had a gloomy week last week and um, didn't get to spend a lot of time outside. Now the area of the state I'm in, we didn't get a lot of rain. It's like the rain kind of circled around us. There was lots of, there was areas west of us that got lots of rain though. But we would, um, you know, get some periodically and it'd go away and it was, it was real humid. And so we just, it was just kind of a gloomy week. I had um, thought this weekend I would get some FFO in on the, the pieces that I had finished that I had shown last week. Well, you know, it's just one of them weekends. My plans, what I wanted to do was, was not what the plans were. And um, as I have said before, my mother is bedridden and she has one of those um, air mattress beds. And if you're not familiar with those, those beds, they have a pump and they have chambers that run throughout the bed. And the bed, uh, the chambers at different times release air and fill up. And, um, and that's to relay pressure points on the body to prevent, help prevent bed sores. And so um, I had noticed Friday, my mother's aides or her aide is here on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And she's not here normally till real late afternoon. We're one of the, her last houses. And um, I had noticed kind of, it was kind of close for Tiff time for Tiffany to be here. And my mother looked like she was sinking in the middle of her bed. Well, when Tiffany got here, I kind of made a comment and um, she said, yeah, that's that's not right. I was, I was just thinking it was just how she was sitting. Cause I, you know, I set the bed up for her. And um, so she called their equipment people and a um, guy came out and um, aired it up, thought it was fixed. The pump went to green because the pump in the meantime had gone to yellow and had started beeping. And um, so the pump had gone to green, thought everything was fine. They all left. And about an hour later, that bed, I could see it, it started losing air and it started beeping again. Well, it does have a mute button that you can push, but it only lasts for about an hour. And um, so I put in a call and they're like, they said, yeah, oh, we'll call him. We'll get him back out there. I don't know where the miscommunication happened, but he never showed up. Well, so I, and y'all, that bed beat every hour. Um, throughout the night. Now I did because I guess about one o'clock I noticed that um, it was not bothering my mother. She was still sleeping through that beeping. I do think she has lost a lot of her hearing. She's 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 a little hard of hearing and with this dementia and one way it affected my mother was it affected her sleep big time. Before she was um, bed bound and all this she was up and down all night. And before dementia, this was not the case. She slept all night, didn't have to have anything to help her sleep. And when she was here um, with me and was still in her own room and getting up, getting herself dressed and all that, yeah, and I was working, um, we had to put a little doorbell on that back door because she sleeps in the, the last room down the hall. And um, that was my daughter's own room. And she, because um, she was getting up every hour and a half fully dressed thinking that this was the new day. And I would be like, no mama, you gotta get, we gotta get you back in your pajamas. You gotta go back to bed. And most of the time, my mother's for the most part, very easy, good, good natured through all this. 
and would be like, oh, okay, I thought it was time to get up and be like, no, mama. But there was a few times she was not, and she would get really aggravated with me. And the doctor would never, her doctor at the time, would never give me, give her anything to make her sleep. He didn't want to give her anything too strong, and I would bet, because I was working. And, you know, I'm, work, I'm going to work on um, maybe two good hours of sleep a night, you know, straight. And so, but since um, they have, since this doctor retired, he was a good doctor, I'm not saying that. Um, he's retired. And so the, the doctor with the hospice, they have put her on a good medicine and she sleeps. And so she um, she slept through all that beeping. So when I realized about one o'clock in the morning, this beeping was not bothering her, I just, uh, I just let it go and I let it beep. But anyway, uh, let me let me kind of cut this story in half. I feel like I'm making it a little long here. Um, so the next morning I called and they came out and the guy ended up replacing the whole mattress and the pump. And they, um, thank goodness, the nurse on call was able to come out and help move her. Um, and I still have her wheelchair from before. And so we, we were able to put her in a wheelchair. So we got that bed fixed. But by the time all that was done, I was not in the mood to do any FFOing because this was, you know, they didn't like, get out of here till close to noon. And I, you know, no sleep hardly the night before. I was like, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to wait. But um, so that was kind of, that was kind of my excitement for the weekend. Sunday, I uh, ended up doing some yard work and um, watching softball. Me and my husband have been watching um the uh, SEC, well, now it's regional softball tournaments, and Arkansas is still in it. They're uh, they're moving on to, uh, I don't know what it's called now, but it's the next step to the World Series for softball. And um, then we had to watch baseball because the Arkansas baseball team is number one in the nation, and they just clinched the SEC championship. And, you know, my husband, we're, we're Razorback fans here. My husband more than me. He, he watches the softball, the baseball, the basketball, the football, and um, so we, we've been watching a lot of softball, and it's been fun. My daughter plays softball. She did the travel ball, and um, my husband, her daddy, he coached the team. Now, we weren't a big-time travel ball. We, we stayed here in Arkansas, but we had a good time. We did that for it's until she was able, before she outgrew it, you know, and didn't, because we didn't move on with it after she hit 15, 16. She was ready to stop, and so... Um, and it, it was tiring, though, because it's, it's an every weekend thing. But um, so we, we enjoy the softball. But um, anyway, so that's um, that was kind of my weekend. Um, I want to ask real quick. I did go. I bought some flowers, and I, was, I had planted some. And I have a clematis. My mother had a clematis bush. Um, and I tried to move it when she moved over here, dug it up, tried to move it. And um, it just, it never survived. It didn't really have a chance. When I first, when I moved it over and I got it planted, my son was still at home and doing the yard work. That was one of the things he had to do was mow and weed the yard. And he weeded that clematis down. Now, it wasn't flowering at the time. So it, I guess to him, it looked like a weed. I don't know. I was, I was not happy, but anyway. So he weeded it down. Well, about the time it starts to grow and, you know, get going, my husband weed eats it. I'm like, do y'all not pay attention to what you're weed eating? And um, so then I just decided, well, I'm going to put it in a pot. I think I read somewhere that you could put them in pots and they do real good. And um, it just, it never, it never recovered. It eventually died out. So if anybody's got any tips on clematis bushes and what I need to do, I know they don't need full sun, but they need uh, a good amount of sun. That's what the lady at the nursery told me. So any of my watcher, viewers, or subscriber, anybody watching this channel, and you have a green thumb, and you know, and you know how to to grow things and not kill them like me, please let me know any anything that would help out with that. Um, I also wanted to say I really enjoyed all the comments last week. Uh, uh, it seemed like most everybody was like me. My back doors, I hear, I hear scratching at back back door. It's just, this is how my videos are going to be, especially if I'm the only one here. Um, there's going to be scratching and dogs want in and out. Um, anyway, um, we're like me. You know, your daddy, my daddy said, you know, because I got my mother's old car and it was like 10, oh, it might have been a little over 10, really, years old. And he was like, if you want a newer car, you got to go to work and, you know, put down your down payment. And 
I, uh, and even the car then that we ended up getting was four years old. And, um, and I drove it for quite a while after school. But um, anyway, I enjoyed reading everybody and what kind of jobs you had, your first jobs. There was a few people like me. My very first job was babysitting. And then I, um, when I got where I could drive, that's when I went to work for Walmart. But, um, but I, I did, I enjoyed all the reading. It's, a lot of people have said that even the vehicles you drive now are not brand new. They're like 10, 15 years old. And so um, I, I enjoyed that and I appreciate every and I thank everybody for the comments. I do feel like I want to just um, clear up a little bit. I was, when I rewatched the video, I thought, gosh, sounds like I hate self-checkout. That's not the case. I do use it. I just feel like in this store, they need to give you an option of what you need to do. And um, that particular day had been very busy. And then you have the still the remodeling and not knowing where anything is. And then you have people that, because now they're forced to use self-checkout, have never used it before and didn't have a clue what they were doing. And so that, that was part of that problem that day. I was frustrated. And I guess I was still frustrated when I got home. You know, sometimes it's going to, I don't know if y'all ever have that when you just go to the grocery store or Walmarts and sometimes they're just not good shopping experiences and you just cannot wait to get out of there. And that, that was that day. So, but anyway, um, I hope everybody had, um, you know, y'all had a great week. Um, also, I do want to say in your comments, please um, tell me what you're working on. And if you're on Instagram, please follow me on Instagram, um, um, Sarah's Cross Stitch. I love seeing what other people are working on and, um, and hearing about what you're working on. I was on Instagram um, yesterday and I saw several projects that people had posted that I even have. I just has um, that I haven't stitched, but they had done them on completely different color fabric. And I always find that um, <clears throat> interesting how just changing even the fabric um, can change the whole look of the chart. And sometimes in my case makes me like it a little better. And so, um, yes, I'm curious. I would love to see, oh, excuse me, what y'all are stitching on. Uh, uh Let me get a drink. I got my coffee here this morning. I'm drinking in my, um, <clears throat> I hope I don't spill this, Primrose um Stitching is cheaper than therapy mug, which I don't know. Sometimes I feel like um, you do spend a lot on stitching too. But, okay. Let me get on with my um, my whips. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, whips are works in progress. I know when I first got back into floss tube, well, first got, when I first started watching floss tube, when I first got back into cross stitch, I didn't know what any of these meant like whips, and I didn't know what frogging meant. And I um, and I did see a, a few videos where they would go back and say, you know, what they meant. But what really hung me up was the LNS. And I had, I guess the video I was watching and the person never said what it was. And so, yeah, I Googled. <laughs> I was like, what is LNS? What does that mean? I could not, for the life of me, figure it out. So I just Googled um, LNS, LNS is cross stitch. What does that mean? And it came up local needle shop. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, makes complete sense. But that one really stumped me. I could not figure it out. So um, I'm gonna try to do better to um, to tell what some of these mean when I when I use them. But let me, um, let me move on. I do have one finish. I finished, um, oh, there it is. So, so I got this book here so I can see it, so you can see it. I finished um, Stars and Stripes by Stitching with the Housewives. I think, let's see, there we go. And um, this was stitched on 28 count linen chalkboard. And y'all, this was my first time to complete a project on linen. I know in the past I've said I don't like linen and I didn't at the time. But I think what's happened because I've stitched so much on even weave that I've got, I've kind of gotten used to the um, going over to and all that. And to be honest, I didn't see a, a big difference between the even weave and linen. Now, I don't know anything about linen. This was a Witchell linen, so it could have just been this brand of linen. I'm, I don't know, um, but I enjoyed it. But I will say this, I know now when false tubers say they have tired eyes and can't stitch it, or you had to stitch it in the morning, 
This was one of those that I had to stitch. I did better in the morning. I couldn't stitch it in the evening because even with my readers and my lights, I struggled. But in the morning, as most mornings, I, I wear glasses. I've, I wear contacts and glasses. I've worn glasses since I was in third grade. I'm blind as a bat. <laughs> and yeah, I was that child that had the Coke bottle glasses and you, I couldn't see a thing without them. And I remember when I was in junior high when soft contacts first came out because they had tried the semi-soft, but I couldn't wear them. They kept popping out of my eyes and um, were very uncomfortable. And so I had to wear my thick Coke bottle glasses up until junior high. And I was so excited when the soft contacts came out and I could wear those. Those didn't bother me at all. But I discovered, because I don't put my um, contacts in first thing in the morning, I, um, I discovered I could stitch better with this in the morning with no age, just my light and just, you know, with my normal eyes, I guess you could say. And, uh, but the only problem was if I was watching TV, I couldn't see the TV. I, now I could see the chart. Now I had to, you know, I had to hold the chart kind of close up, but, um, I could, I did so much better stitching with no, no, I could see the holes a lot better without anything. So I enjoyed it. It was fun. And I, I am going to, I've gotten some more linen since then. And I'm going to um, try stitching some more on linen. But um, that one, I, once I kind of got close to finish, that was the one that I really worked on. I'm, I'm one of these that I like having more projects. I do. I like having more widths. But once I get one close to finish, that's the one I kind of, I, I want to get it finished. And that's the one that I will work on. I'm sorry. I just saw something. I was, my blinds are open this morning. So I saw I thought I saw something. Um, so that was my finish. I do. I did work on. We have a lot of people out in my neighborhood that walk in the morning, and a lot of dogs that walk with them or just roaming. So that's more likely when you hear my dogs barking. That's what they're barking at. Um, this is All American by um, Primrose Cottage Stitches, and this is where I got on it. I got the USA done. And I, I think, I don't know if I had this finished last week. I didn't get as much. I really had plans to really work on this, but I didn't get as much work done. And I got this done. And so um, I'm going to insert a picture of what the chart looks like finished. But I do plan on, because I, I want to get this finished by 4th of July. And I think I can. It, 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 once you start stitching on it, it, it goes pretty fast. So I'm still really enjoying this. This is on a 28 count. Um, uh, I think just a piece I got at um, Hobby Lobby and it's coffee tea dyed that I did. So that's that one. My second one I worked on was the Fright Night with the mystery sale that the Fat Quarter Shop had last year. Here's this. This is it. And I got a little bit of progress done on it. And this is on, I believe this is a 25 count Lugana. And I, um, it was a light gray and I dunked it in some pearl rip dye gray to make it darker. But I got all this done right here. Got the little windows put in and I started up on the roof, but this roof will go into the moon. The moon is going to be up and around here. So I think I'm going to start on that moon or at least the bottom part to make sure that everything's going to line up good. But this is, this is my, where I got on it. So, still enjoying this one. Still going to, you know, pull it out and stitch on it too. And then I have a new start. I started Brenda Gervais' um, Jean Worker. And I am, this is the chart. And I'm changing this up. I'm actually, this is the first time I've ever picked a chart out with all my own colors. I have never, um, now I've switched out colors here and there, but I've never completely changed it. So, um, and I'll show you. I got a little start on it, and it's, it kind of looks a mess, and I thought I needed to fix it, but I thought, no, I want to show everybody what, you know, what really goes on here. Um, but this is it. I had started, this This will say summer time. And I had started stitching, I had stitched the word summertime in this DMC, um, 
$9.59. This is it right here. And it's, I love that. It's a beautiful color. I really like it. But once I got over to this little, um, it's going to be like a little flower. It's going to have a, I call it like a little garland flower. I just didn't like how they looked, those two colors looked. So I was ripped out Summer and I started it back in the DMC 794. This is it right here. And it's a real pretty blue. And so I think I'm, um, I'm gonna keep it. And then I will take this out and finish. And I think that'll look real good. This will say Catching Fireflies and it's stitched in DMC uh, 353. And it really is a lot more noticeable in person. I think here on the chart on here, now you can see it. You can see it a lot better. And if you see right here, I messed up right there. I gotta take that out. I put too many stitches in my R. <laughs> so, but that's an easy fix, so. But yeah, and I also, because I knew it was gonna happen, I was gonna, once I started stitching it, I knew there'll be colors that I think I thought would work out, but will not. And um, I made, I did make myself uh, a kind of a cheat sheet notes. It's kind of a mess, but I know what's going on with it. And here's all my um, my flosses. They're they're just a mess thrown in there. <laughs> but um, anyway, I'm anxious to get started back on it. I'm hoping I can. Um, I'm hoping I'll get some progress. I got to clean house earlier later on today cleaning house it just it seems like that's all i do but i gotta get it done my house there's so much i hate to dust i hate to dust more than anything and you can you can write in the dust on my furniture now so it's time to get it dusted um but yeah i'll, I'll put that off and put it off i don't know i've always hated to dust when i was growing up my mother during the summer i always had chores i had to do and that was part of it i had to either wash clothes clean house um a lot of times get supper started for because, um, you know, she um, she worked, and so did my dad. My, work, my dad worked shift work. And so um, it was not unusual for me to, um, during the summer, I always had a list of tour, and I had to get them done before um, she got home. And if they weren't done, I didn't go anywhere until they were done. So, and I guess I've always, I've always hated Dustin. But that's all that I worked on this week. I do have um, a little bit of a haul. I bought um, some blackbird patterns. I didn't have any. And um, I, I've been wanting some because I know that um, I heard a lot of people talking about Brenda and the Serial Starter. They were doing a blackbird weekend. And I was like, well, I don't, you know, that's when I realized I don't even have a blackbird pattern. So I, I looked and I found some. And I got the Midnight Watch um, with... And I thought this was really cute. And so when they do that again, I can I can join in. And um, I know she's having health problems, and I, I wish her the best. And I hope I hope everything's you know is is going okay for. Her. And I got souvenirs of summer. And I think I I like this one. I bought it because I really like this. Um, and I've seen it stitched. Um, Quite a few times. I just, I just sent them. I just like this one. But once I started looking, I like this one too, the fish. And you know, my husband and their fam, his family, they're big fishermen, and they have a kind of like a little fishing house on the my nose looks on the um, White River. And so I thought, well, that would be cute to stitch that and. Um, frame it and she can take it down there. I just, so that, that might be, I don't know if I get to it this year, but that's, that's a possibility. But I did get those two. And also I did get some fabric. You know, it's kind of a funny story. My husband had came in, I can't remember now if it was, it had to be in um, Thursday morning. It had to be Thursday afternoon, maybe. He came in the house and, um, he said, I'm just to make a, fat, a quick trip to Little Rock to Academy. Um, do you need anything from your store? And I was, I, don't, I think I was, I was doing something. I've been folding laundry. I'm not sure. And I thought, my store? What do you mean, my store? He said, yeah, you know, your cross-stitch store, that one I always go to for you. I said, oh, yeah, I do. And so I got on the phone and, because um, Academy, Sport Academy is just basically across the street from them. 
Um, and I got on the phone and I called them and we talked about some fabric that I seen online and I um, purchased it. And um, so he went and picked it up. And so when he got home, he comes in the house and he brings, you know, he's bringing everything in and he, I'm looking at my fat fabric and he says, um, he's all kind of, you know, puffed up. And he says, those ladies in that store say, I'm a keeper. <laughs> I said, I agree, he's a keeper. I said, really? He said, yeah, I'm a keeper because I, uh, I pick up all your cross stitch when you can't make it to Little Rock. I, I pick up stuff for you. And he is, he's real good about it. But I just got so tickled. And then I started laughing. I said, yeah. I said, that is funny. I said, who would have ever thought that you would know these ladies at this store better than me? <laughs> he said, yeah. Because I don't think before I got back in a cross stitch, he didn't have a clue what cross stitch was. Probably never heard of it. And so now he um, he's going to be on first name basis with them women up there before it's all over with. But I got tickled. But they, um, I did get, this is 32 count linen. I got, uh, this is picture, this plus, Wren. Is this Wren? Yeah. And I, I'm sure y'all all seen this hundreds of times. But I had never, I don't have it. And I think it's real pretty. I'll be able to put a lot on that. And then I got picture, this plus, um, Splash. And it's, now they did tell me it was dark. And so, um, and it is pretty. I do like it. But, um. I will definitely have to find the right piece for it, but it is very pretty. And then I got, this is, um, what is it? Shale, S-H-A-L-E. This is very pretty. Got this. So I'm excited about these and some more linen. I'm hoping these will, these will be as easy. The girl uh, at the store said that, yeah, this, this would be a good linen. Since I'm still learning, this will be a good one. So um, I'm excited about that. Uh, um, that's really, oh, I wanted to show also with my, I, I got these a couple of weeks ago, but I keep forgetting to, to show them. I have seen these needle minders and one of them was a Titanic. Yeah, you know, I love anything Titanic. I've watched all the documentaries. I've watched the movie Titanic. I've seen, um, I just, I love, and I watched a lot of things on YouTube where the, they show what stuff's been found from the Titanic. And I've read books and I just love anything Titanic. And um, I found this needle minder and I just had to get it. I just um, thought it was so cute. And then I um, got, when I got that one, Little Women. It's one of my favorite books and movies also. And I know that the um, Stitching um, Book Club, I don't think that's the right name, but it's the one that did the Frankenstein and Secret Garden and um, just finished up, um, oh, is it Sense and Sensibility? Just finished that one up. Um and then she's fixing to start Little Women. So I'm excited about Little Women. I'm, I'm hoping I can keep it, it up. But, so I got that for that. And so, those are, they're not new. I've had them for a while. But anyway, I just thought, I found them and I thought, oh, I'll show those. Um, that's all cross stitch that I have. I, um, I did, um, I did a little painting this week and I thought I would, I would show it. I kind of got in the mood to, to, to paint and, um, I like to watch this girl on, um, she's on Facebook and she also has a YouTube channel. Her name's Tamara Bennett. And she also, now if you're really into the painting, now a friend of mine, she's selling these door hangers and um, she's in the Painter's Clubhouse. But I, I don't think I'd ever sell them. But anyway, she did an online thing on painting letters and she did three different techniques and this was called the Farmhouse. And this was my version and I was real happy with it and I'm going to get my J done and I'm going to hang them back there in my craft room. Right now it's a craft room slash junk room slash bedroom for when my daughter comes home. Um, she, um, she stays back there because it was originally her bedroom. And um, so one of these days I'm going to get me some nice shelving units in there and just have it really nice. And, um, but I'm going to hang these back there. I thought it turned out really good. And then I have, I have one of those home celebration sign boards that you switch out different motif things for the O. 
And so I painted um, this little truck that says, be happy. I did that for my sign. And then I have this little owl. I love owls. And now this, these little plaid parts is, is um, scrapbook paper that I just glued on. But I thought she turned, I called it her. She turned out so cute. So those are my little, that's what I got painted this week. Um, I also wanted to tell, because I had, I've tried a new recipe. I found it off that channel I had told y'all about a couple weeks ago called um, Mandy in the Making. Um, it's called Taco Pasta. And, oh, it's really good. It's, um, it's very simple to make. It's just... Um, like you would think, the ground beef with taco seasoning in it. And it's got cheese and rotel, um, some whole milk, a little bit of milk, not much, some chicken broth, and um, and of course the garlic and pasta and all that too. It's very good. I will link the recipe. I really recommend it. Um, we, I just ate it with some salad. My husband, you know, because he's picky, he, he didn't eat it. So I um, sent a bunch of it home with a good friend of mine, and she she really raved about it. She thought it was very good. So um, I will definitely put that in there and link it. And I guess that is um, all I have. Um, my plans next week is just to, to work on whips that I have. And then I've got one more start I'm going to try for next weekend. I don't know. Yeah, what I'm going to start. I kind of want to start my Santa. I need to start my Santa Village. But then something always pops up that I want to start then too. So, but anyway, that's that's my plans for stitching for this next week. Oh, now next weekend, my video might be late coming up again too. Because my daughter and her fiance will be here for Memorial Day weekend. And I'm not sure what time they're leaving Sunday. I don't know. If, she has to work Monday. And um, so I know they'll be leaving sometime Sunday, but I don't know what time. So it just depends on that and what else going on. Um, I'm sure my son and um, his girlfriend will be here at some point too. And we'll probably have a cookout and things, you know, just things like that. So it might be a little later than usual. I'm not sure. But um, that's all that I've got this week. I, um, I do have... Um, talk about my books. I did finish um, The Forgotten Room, and it was good. I enjoyed it, and I, I do recommend it, especially if you like historical historical fiction and you different timelines. You follow three different characters. You follow Olive, Lucy, and Kate, and they're all in different timelines, and um, it, was, it was a good book. I did find myself more interested in Lucy and Kate's story than Olive's. It wasn't that Olive's was a bad story. It's just me personally. I was, I found myself looking more forward to when you would get back to their story. And um, it had a good ending. I kind of figured it out. There was a few things that they involved in the ending that I didn't see coming. But um, for the most part, I kind of, you know, I kind of knew how it was going to end. And it, um, I enjoyed it and I recommend it. Like I said, it's it's not one of my absolutely favorite books I've read, but it's definitely not a bad book. It's it's a good book. But I um, I had to take it back to the library, and so um, I don't have it to show. But I've also been reading um, back to my uh, Mifford series, uh, um, and I, I really enjoy it. I've been trying to uh, try to read on it last night, and of course Friday night. But Friday night with all the beeping going on. I didn't get a lot of uh, reading. And then last night, I was wa we were watching um, softball. The, um, who was it? They went into um, overtime, and they didn't know if they were going to get the... Oh, it was Oregon and... Um, oh, who was the team? Gosh, I can't believe I forgot. I can just see them right here. Um, Texas. Oregon and Texas. And... Um, Oregon won the first game. Oregon was already in the elimination. They won the first game, and it went late because they were a big rain delay um, before they could ever start it. And so there was a big discussion about whether or not they were going to, because Oregon had won, they had to play a game too. Um, and so there was a big discussion about they were going to try to get it, and they, if they get the game in, um, because today, evidently, they're supposed to get a lot of rain in Texas today. So they didn't knew they were not going to be able to get that game in today. 
So at 11.15 last night, they started game two. Of course, I fell asleep through it, but I woke up right at the ending and um, Texas won game two. And so that they're moving on. But, um, but that I didn't, I didn't get a lot of reading because I was watching softball last night. But um, I hope everybody um, has a great week and y'all have a good Memorial Day weekend and you get to spend it with your family and you're all well. And um, I, um, 